Hi everyone, welcome and welcome back to Dr. Han's classroom. So these days, I feel like all the pharmaceutical companies are taking turns to get into the spotlights. And for the past two weeks, the Pfizer's COVID-19 booster dose were all over the news. And this week, Merck has just announced its new golden child, Monopiravir, and how well it works against COVID-19. So this week. Let's look at how this drug works, what this is, and what its implications. And let's also have a little update on ivermectin. So just to be clear, this video is for educational purposes only, and I make no recommendation on COVID-19 treatment. And without further ado, let's get started. Merck's new golden child. What's monopiravir? Let's first take a look of how it works. Let's have a quick review on the viral cycle. Now, the SARS-CoV-2 virus can bind to the ACE2 receptor on human cells, and after the virus enters the host cell, it will start to unpack itself. A viral protein called the RNA polymerase is responsible for making copies of viral RNA genomic materials. This process is unique to the virus and does not happen to human cell. So scientists look for drugs that can stop this replication process and decrease the viral load. Monopiravir is a drug that looks like one of the building blocks of RNA replication. It is called a cytidine analog, and because the drug looks like the real cytidine, it can trick the RNA polymerase into incorporating the drug into the viral RNA. And because it is not the real thing, it induces many mutations in the viral genome. Ultimately, these mutations will make the virus unable to complete its life cycle. Now the second question. Let's look at how well does this drug work. Merck enrolled at-risk, non-hospitalized adult patients with mild to moderate COVID-19 in their phase three move-out trial, and the interim analysis showed monopiravir reduced the risk of hospitalization or death by approximately 50%. 28 of the 385 patients who received the drug were hospitalized through day 29 after randomization in the trial, with no deaths in the treatment group, compared with 53 of the 377 placebo-treated patients were hospitalized, and eight deaths were reported. Notice the number of patients enrolled in phase three trials are relatively small. It is because both the Independent Data Monitoring Committee and the FDA recognized the risk reduction benefits with the existing result and recommended to stop the study recruitment early because it would be unethical to continue the trial and give placebos to patients. And what about variants? And according to Merck's press release, monopiravir demonstrated consistent efficacy across viral variants such as the gamma, delta, and the newest mu. And Merck is planning to submit a emergency use authorization application to the FDA very soon. And a third question: Why monopiravir is different than other drugs? And the first reason is that unlike remdesivir, which is a intravenous drug that is for hospitalized COVID patients, monopiravir is the first oral antiviral drug shown to significantly reduce hospitalizations and death rates in high-risk patients when the drug is given early. Second, monopiravir is harder for the virus to gain resistance than remdesivir. This is because remdesivir introduced an RNA chain terminal, which can be overcome by a coronavirus proofreading enzyme, exoribonucleases, to remove the RNA errors. On the other hand, monopiravir introduces multiple mutation points in the viral genome, so it can escape viral proofreading functions and retain its effectiveness. And let's look at 
its implication and some of the reality questions, who would be able to receive the drug? The fact that the clinical trial was conducted in mild to moderate COVID-19 patients with at least one risk factor associated with poor disease outcomes, the initial EUA from the FDA will likely only authorize the drug use in this group of people, and COVID patients without risk factors will not likely be in the initial indication for the drug. Now, one thing for sure is that this drug will not be used in pregnant women because there is a small risk that the drug is metabolized into a deoxy form and cause DNA mutations in human cells. And the second reality check is how much. Now, when it comes to drug prices, I understand money is always a very sensitive question. And back in June, the U.S. government has already agreed to purchase about 1.7 million courses of the drug once it is authorized or approved, with a very high price of about 1.2 billion dollars, which is about 700 dollars per course of treatment. And then the next question is: What happens after the 1.7 million courses of drug are all used? Now it is uncertain at this point. There's no way to know for sure if the U.S. government will purchase any more beyond that amount. Then the cost is going to be on the patients. Now it is hard also to guess how much or if the insurance company will pick up a portion of the drug cost. And the cost sharing may also tie to vaccination status. So if it is so expensive, are there any alternatives? And right now, the only FDA-authorized alternative early COVID-19 treatment with a similar indication is the antibody treatment from Regeneron. Now, it is definitely not cheaper than monopiravir, but at this point, it is still being sponsored by the、uh, U.S. government. And I know how everyone will react to COVID-19 treatments in the comments, so let's also have a small update on the ivermectin. And one of the most comprehensive ivermectin meta-analyses is finally published in August. And very briefly, the study concluded that moderate certainty evidence finds that large reduction in COVID-19 deaths are possible with using ivermectin, and using ivermectin early in clinical course may reduce numbers progressing to severe disease. And I know you may hold a different opinion. Now, however, the WHO still only just recommend using ivermectin in clinical trials only, and NIH has not changed its recommendation for either for or against the use of ivermectin for treatment of COVID-19. But the small good news is that there are at least two large ivermectin clinical trials in the U.S. The first study is led by the University of Minnesota. Now, this study is still recruiting volunteers nationwide and expects to include a total of 1,124 participants aged from 30 to 85 years old. The second large study is called Active Six, which is the sixth of a series of study funded by the NIH called the Accelerating COVID-19 Therapeutic Interventions and Vaccines, started back in April and included ivermectin in August. The study is still also actively recruiting patients nationwide, and if patients are eligible, the sponsor will ship the drug to participants anywhere in the U.S. at no cost. This study is designed to enroll up to fifteen thousand adults that have a duration of two years, and I have the links for both clinical trials in the description box below. And if you are someone who really believes in ivermectin, you may want to participate in the clinical trials to help to bring the drug into recognition. Now, it is also way safer than using ivermectin sold for animal use. I have also previously made a video to look at how ivermectin works. If you would like to learn more about the basic science of the drug, please check out that video as well.
Lastly, I want to make it clear that I don't hold any financial interest in pharmaceutical companies, and they do not support me in any way. I do not receive anything from them, and that is all for this week. And if you would like to continue follow COVID nineteen updates with me, please leave me a comment and share and like this video, and also consider subscribing to this channel. This channel need your help to reach more people. Now, although my school lectures are making me quite Busy these days. I will continue to make quality videos, and I will see you in my next one. And meanwhile, please stay safe and healthy, like always, and take care. Bye.